suppose it was Reese as he's trying to move inside. Still had the line. It goes into the centre circle. Plays a nice ball to Gray here. Gray holding it out to the near side again to Graham. Graham just outside the worst penalty area. Takes the ball to his right foot. Lifts it high. Looking to the head of Jordan. Jordan reaches it. He knocks it forward. Get it as Reese knocks it down. The ball's punched away from him. But the linesman flag is up and they're still fighting for that ball. The linesman flag is up in the near side as Kenny Douglas comes. Drives the ball into the net, but in fact, Dudley was in an offside position, or so the linesman spotted long before that ball hit the net. Well, that was probably the nearest Scotland have come. I think Scotland are playing a lot harder now, and they're doing things a little more quickly, but of course they're exposing themselves at the back in the process, and Robbie James' shot, which I thought Alan got flicked onto the bar, uh, well, it was a very good save, actually, I thought, but uh, they're exposing themselves, and Wales might well capitalise on that. Certainly a fabulous shot there, and uh, if, if Alan Ruff touched it, good for him, because it was really going in like a bullet. 2-0 then, Wales still in the lead, and Scotland coming forward now. There's Hanson just touching the ball forward on a level with that Wales 18-yard line on the far side. The field defense suddenly, suddenly trying to cut the ball across. He's tackled by Custis as he does so, and a 400,000-pound striker becomes a defender as he comes that ball for a corner. Quick corner taken to Dougley. The referee's whistle has gone again, and the corner must be retaken. Probably wasn't inside the arc when it was hit there by Burley. And here's the corner now by Doug Lake this time. Over on the far side to Scotty Price. High one this time, looking for the head of Jordan. Jordan not quite getting through. The ball comes out the edge of penalty area. It's some high into the air again. Cuts it back again, helping his defence. The Welsh defence following out, nodding that ball out all the way. Cuts it again underneath it into the centre circle. The ball flicked forward, beautifully right into the path of Jordan. Jordan squaring it, a wonderful chance for drive first time, and it's over the top. What a first time drive there by John Walk, left footed. Screams over the Welsh crossbar. So still, it's Wales 2, Scotland 0, and almost 20 minutes of the second half gone. And it looks as if, apart from. Uh, being stretched in defence, Scotland are not going to have the best of luck with the finish. The park looking just a little bit fiery, the ball rising very quickly now. Guy Davis hitting it into the centre circle, ball bump forward there by Mahoney. Too far forward, runs right through to Alan Ross, but unless Scotland can stage something really spectacular in the second half of this second half, then in fact the start to the Home International Series a pretty sorry one. Well, 2-0 in the lead now. Alan Hansen for Scotland on the centre line, pushing it forward. Graham trying to turn the net. The ball breaks to Sooners. Sooners giving it forward to Jordan. Jordan to his left foot, tries to drive it blocks. Out it comes. Jordan tries to follow up. Phillips clear that ball away. Jonas has it now for Wales. Up to the centre line he goes. Moving left. He slips his man. Jack comes in the inside to Jonas. He's got a man spare out in this near side. And a man spare Stevenson, the fullback. He stopped the ball. Kickily flicks the ball through the legs of Graham. To Mahoney. Mahoney coming forward. Cuts the square. It's Joris on to it. Joris forward to Toshak. Toshak, a beautiful ball inside to James. James trying to find space. He's got it. He drives. And the ball just sweeps across the goal. And behind, past the right hand post of Alan Ruff. 21 minutes gone. And still 2 0 for Wills as the Scottish goalkeeper, breathing a sigh of relief now, no doubt, lines up to take the goal kick. Alan Ruff then, left footed, a high one up into the centre circle, head flicked on there by Jordan, who's getting himself in ball, here's the way though, and it's pushed back again to Arthur Graham, Graham coming through for Scotland, just outside the penalty area, tries to drive, he gets a deflection, and I thought he had got a deflection, the ball goes past, but the referee is indicating, in fact, yes, it is a goal kick, and so, once again, Richard Shepherd with the score at 2 nothing for Wales, you're not doing much for Scotland today at all, are you? Head back again to you. <laughs> 22 minutes into the second half, Wales 2, Scotland 0. Scotland, remember, haven't lost on this ground in 15 years. October 1964 was the last time. But the Welsh very much in command at the moment, though let, me, let it be said that when Scotland has come forward in the second half, they've looked a much better side than in the last period of the first half. It's the Welsh who come forward again, far side, Welsh left. Joey Jones is brought down by John Walk. That is a free kick to Wales, 10 yards inside the Scottish half. Little Brian Flynn lobs it forward looking for Curtis Curtis beats his man tries to set up for a shot it's blocked by Haggerty the ball rebounds away to the far side Walk is back there in the right back position and turns that ball back to Alan Ruff away to our right Ruff then throws left handed up to Hanson halfway inside his own half centre field he 
turns it square to George Burley. Burley comes forward over the halfway line, finds Ipswich colleague John Walk. A very good ball forward by Walk to Sunef, just outside the Welsh penalty area. He was robbed by Yoref. Yoref tries to play it forward up to the halfway line. The Scots win it again. Frank Gray comes forward halfway inside the Welsh half, near side. But Robbie James of Swansea gets the foot in, puts the ball in the touch. Throw into Scotland, 10 yards inside the Welsh half, just down in front of us. Frank Gray will take it, throws it in to Kenny Dalgleish. Dalgleish is robbed by Leighton Phillips. Phillips comes forward, plays it up to the halfway line to Toshak. A good dummy by Toshak on Hansen. Holds, waits for support. Tries to back heel it to the near side, but Frank Gray is there. Plays it upfield to Arthur Graham. Graham now goes forward, 10 yards inside the Welsh half. Too many defenders round him. And Phil Dwyer has it for Wales, near side. Plays it up to Aaron Curtis. Curtis nods it infield to Toshak. Toshak tries to turn it to this near touchline, but Curtis is offside, halfway inside the Scottish half. Free kick to Scotland. Frank Gray will take it. It's it across field to George Burley on the opposite flank. Burley comes forward over the halfway line, far side, Scottish right. Lays it up to Dalgleish. Dalgleish now 10 yards outside the Welsh penalty area. Forced across field by Leighton Phillips. Tries to get the shot in and it's straight into the arm of Di Davis. Away to our left. So Kenny Dalgleish not having a great deal of luck as captain of Scotland today because Wales leads Scotland by two goals to nil. And we've had 25 minutes of the second half. Joe Jordan caught offside halfway inside the Welsh half as Kenny Dalgleish tried to get forward. Free kick to Wales and certainly the Welsh when they come forward as Scotland look a bit exposed at times looking quite dangerous Robbie James of Swansea George Edwards having uh, an outstanding game yeah I think he's doing very well and twice he's worked himself into a shooting position and, and he's had shots in on both occasions but I think Scotland are making a tremendous effort now and anything could happen really Scotland in possession in the right back position, far side of the field, halfway inside their own half. The ball played up to Sunes. Sunes lays it off to Burley. Burley plays it up into the Welsh half to Dalgleish. Dalgleish now halfway inside the Welsh half, goes forward, challenged by Phillips, tries to play it square. Dwyer is there, edge of his own penalty area, and Dwyer comes forward, plays it left to Yoraf. Yoraf is robbed by Sunes, but still the Welsh defending in strength. Joey Jones plays it up into the Scottish half. Frank Gray is back for Scotland. Centre field, holds, challenged by Toshak. Plays it down the near left-hand touchline for Scotland. Substitute Joe Jordan will hold on the touchline. Tries to get the throw off Leighton Phillips. He does. Throw in then to Scotland. Level with the edge of the Welsh penalty area. Near side, Scottish left. Arthur Graham will take it. Throws it in to Hartford. Hartford is robbed by John Mahoney. Another throw to Scotland from the same position. This time, Asa Hartford will take it. Throws it in to Dalgleish. Dalgleish on the byline, tries to get the cross in. Completely mishits it high into the air and behind. And time running out a little bit for Scotland now because we're over halfway through the second half and Wales still holding a grip by two goals to nil. The Scots desperately needing something at this stage to put themselves back into the match. Di Davies will take that goal kick. The ball drips away to this near side. Headed out of play by Frank Gray on the halfway line, just down in front of us. In fact, it's Scotland's throw. Gray will throw it in to Dalgleish. Dalgleish tries to flick it over his head. The ball bouncing about as Dalgleish and Phillips challenge. And Dalgleish it is who wins the free kick. So a free kick to Scotland, 10 yards outside the Welsh penalty area towards the near side of the field. Just to the left of goal as Hartford looks at it, takes the kick, floats it to the far side. Toshak is there, tries to head it away, and the ball almost behind for a corner, but Toshak recovers in the left-back position and holds. And what an afternoon it's been for John Toshak. Two goals for Wales. And what a week it's been for him, because eight days ago he scored the goal which put his club, Swansea City, back into the second division for the first time in 14 years. As Phil Dwyer heads forward for Wales from just inside his own half, the ball with Robbie James on this near side. Tries to play the ball into the Scottish penalty area. Hegarty is covering, and Hegarty slips, and the ball would drift behind for a corner, will it? No, because Hegarty was unfairly challenged by Alan Curtis, and Hegarty is injured. So play held up for a moment for treatment to Paul Hegarty and George Edwards. As I said earlier, time running out a little bit for Scotland now. Yes, uh, but uh, even so, pressure does build on the side defending the 2-0 lead. Wales need to keep a cool head now, and they must win this match. But um, 
then again a silly mistake could lead to a goal but I would like to just say one thing about Toshak he is really playing a good game isn't he his control of the ball is so much better than it used to be and he's a real thorn in the Scottish defence 28 minutes of the second half gone Wales 2 Scotland nil at Alan Ruff clears high upfield Mahoney can only head on towards his own goal and the ball will fall to Jordan it tries a snapshot and it's wide and that sums up the Scottish finishing this afternoon because they've had chances but haven't really looked like taking them and the match attendance this afternoon 20,371 so the Football Association of Wales I should think will be fairly happy with that the attendance not in the class of some 15, 20 years ago when 60,000 used to pack the ground regularly for these matches but it's Scotland who come forward again the ball with Hanson, he gives it away to Flynn in the centre circle, Flynn tries to play it forward Hegarty tries to get it upfield to Hartford for Scotland. Hartford turns it away to the near side. Arthur Graham will hold 10 yards inside the Welsh half. Comes in between two defenders and wins a free kick because Stevenson and Mahoney were both unfairly challenging. Free kick then to Scotland, near touchline, Scottish left. 10 yards inside the Welsh half. Gray will take it forward to Hartford. Hartford turns it forward to Dalgreish. Dalgreish tries a snapshot and it's well saved by Di Davis. Not a great deal of power in that shot by Kenny Dalgreish. And Di Davis will roll the ball slowly towards the edge of his own penalty area, feeling at this stage that his side is fairly well in command with that 2-0 lead, both goals coming from John Toshak after 29 minutes and 35 minutes. And it's Toshak with the ball now on the halfway line. Turns it back to Byron Stevenson. Stevenson, the ball forward to Curtis. Curtis tries to win it. And he's unfairly challenging Paul Hegarty. And that's a free kick to Scotland in the left-back position, just outside their own penalty area. Quickly taken forward to Hartford. Hartford is robbed by Mahoney. And Mahoney runs the ball into touch. Off the boot of Frank Gray. And in fact, it went on in off Mahoney. So Gray will get the throw halfway inside his own half, near side. Scottish left. The ball thrown back to Alan Hansen. And a strange decision that by the referee, George Edwards. He appears to have reversed it yet again. Yes, I don't know what happened there because it was six to one and half a dozen of the other, but he's decided, obviously, uh, to throw into Wales. So Stevenson with the throw for Wales, throws it down the line, looking for Toshak. Toshak holds off the challenge of Hansen, who can only push the ball into touch. Welsh throw, level with the edge of the Scottish penalty area, near side. Welsh right. Mahoney will take it. Curtis comes to the near edge of the Scottish penalty area and will get it, will get to the byline. And can get the cross in if he chooses to. Holes crosses it far side. Toshak has it in. And it's there. And that is a hat trick for John Toshak. His first ever hat trick for Wales. And Wales are in the lead by three goals to nil. And we have just 14 minutes left. Wales three, Scotland nil. Well, that was a, a good goal by Toshak, but I'm sure that Scotland will not be very happy because. Um, it was Curtis who was out on the right-hand side near the dead ball line was allowed all the time in the world to get his cross over and Toshik was on his own when he nodded it in the net. A bad goal from Scotland but a good one for Wales. So Wales now look as if they're going to get their first victory over Scotland in 14 years and John Toshak will be the man who will give it to them because John Toshak has scored a hat-trick for Wales. And Scotland looks stunned. And it's a goal kick now to Wales. Guy Davis to take it away to our left. And it's a long time since Wales have been in such a commanding position against one of the home countries here at Ninian Park. Wales 3, Scotland 0. And we have 13 minutes of the game left. The ball with John Mahoney, 10 yards inside the Scottish half. Centerfield turns it back to skipper Terry Yorath. Yorath will sweep it out to the near side to Toshak. But Toshak is offside. He won't worry too much about that. He's got three goals this afternoon. The first after 29 minutes, the second after 35 minutes, and the third one just a few minutes ago with 14 minutes of the game remaining. A brilliant header from across by Alan Curtis to make it Wales 3, Scotland 0. It's a free kick for Scotland. Quickly taken forward to Kenny Dalgleish. Tries a shot, and it's saved by Di Davis. And there wasn't much conviction, George Edwards, in that shot no, by Kenny Dalgleish. I think that sums it up for Scotland because they've had a lot of chances, but their shooting has been very poor indeed. And that was great at Di Davis again. Twelve and a half minutes of the game remaining. Wales 3, Scotland 0. The ball with Di Davis, the Welsh goalkeeper, away to our left. 
This large crowd still buzzing about that goal because Alan Curtis had so much time and space to measure that cross. He could have chosen any one of three players, picked out the head of Toshak, and the Swansea City player manager did the damage. It is Scotland in possession in the centre circle. Hansen playing it forward to Hartford. Hartford tries to play it forward to Sunes. Sunes holds, but in comes Mahoney with a challenge and plays the ball a long way back to goalkeeper Di Davis. And the Welsh flag all around this stadium waves high because Wales lead by three goals to nil. As Di Davis clears high down centre field, looks for the head of Toshak halfway inside the Welsh half. Toshak will win it inside the Scottish half, rather. Toshak wins it for James. James wide, near side. Welsh right plays it infield to Mahoney. Mahoney comes forward, plays it infield, looking for Curtis. But Curtis couldn't get to it. The ball straight through to Alan Ruff, the Scottish goalkeeper, away to our right. Ruff will roll it out to George Burley, halfway inside his own half, far side. Burley then turns it infield to Paul Hegarty. Hegarty square to Alan Hansen. Hansen plays it up to the halfway line to Hartford. Hartford turns slowly, plays it forward to Dalgleish. Dalgleish now 10 yards inside the Welsh half, plays it square to Frank Gray. Gray leaves it for Dalgleish. Dalgleish trying to play it forward. Toshak is back to cover. The ball gets off his boots towards the right back position for Wales, where Stevenson will play it up towards the halfway line. Hansen wins it, nods it forward. And eventually it comes to Frank Gray, corner of the Welsh penalty area, near side, Scottish left. But Stevenson gets a challenge in, and it's a throw in to Scotland. And there are just 11 minutes of the game left with Wales leading by three goals to nil. The ball thrown in to Dalgleish. Dalgleish turns, lobs it across goal. Well taken by Di Davis. And Davis looks and waits for people to move upfield. So Scotland looking now as if they're going down to defeat here at Minion Park as Di Davis, the Welsh goalkeeper, away to our left, clears high, down centre field. Koshak is beaten by Hegarty. Hegarty heads up towards the halfway line where Joey Jones heads it wide to the far side to little Brian Flynn and Flynn takes it back into his own half and will play that a long way back to goalkeeper Di Davis inviting the Scots to come forward but they're not taking up that challenge at the moment as Davis clears right footed down centre field again looks for the head of Toshak and this time Toshak nods it on to Robbie James and James will nod it on to Curtis and Curtis holds off the challenge and finds Toshak and Toshak on the right side of goal will get the cross in far post and a push coming in it seemed on Little Brian Flynn but play on to the referee and George Burley the Scottish right back goes forward halfway inside his own half far side plays a long ball forward to Sunes Sunes now deep inside the Welsh half far side plays it forward looking for Dalgleish the Dalgleish is robbed by Phillips in the left back position almost on his own corner flag he plays it up to Joey Jones Jones turns and can only put it out of play far side throw in to the Scots 10 yards inside the Welsh half the ball thrown in to Paul Hegarty Hegarty now a chance to come forward very slowly indeed looks up crosses it into the penalty area the flag goes up and Joe Jordan is offside and certainly one gets the feeling now George Edwards that Wales are comparatively strolling to victory. Oh, yes. Uh, Scotland seems to have lost their way totally. In fact, Wales have been on top, really, for the last hour. And it's uh, a very disappointing performance by the Scottish team. But full credit to the Welsh side. They haven't relented for one single moment. And from that first goal on, they've got a grip that's tightened all the time. And play halfway inside the Welsh half, far side. Left back, Joey Jones will play that a long way back again to goalkeeper Di Davis. Davis will get it back off Leighton Phillips. And the Welsh playing possession football at the moment looking for their first victory over Scotland in 14 years Di Davis will find the head of Robbie James James nods it on to John Toshak halfway inside the Scottish half but he loses it and it's Sunes who comes forward for Scotland now halfway inside the Welsh half goes forward tries to play to the far side it rebounds back to Dalgleish too many defenders round Dalgleish and a foul in fact for Scotland so it's a free kick because Sunes, I think, was unfairly challenged as he made that pass forward to Dalgleish. Free kick to Scotland, centre field. 15 yards outside the Welsh penalty area. Hartford is there. So is John Walk. And in fact, it'll be Asa Hartford who will take this free kick. Plays it square to Frank Gray. Gray will come in with a shot. And he hits the post. And Walk will head it back in. And it's in. But the offside flag raised. And no goal to Scotland. 
but that was a great shot indeed from Frank Gray, and as the ball came back off the post, I think it was John Wolfe who had moved into an offside position, got the header in over Di Davis, but by then it was too late, the linesman's flag had gone up, and that's possibly the nearest that Scotland have come to scoring. But seven minutes of the game left, a moment of hope one brought there for Scotland, but not to be. Wales lead by three goals to nil. And it's Scotland in possession, halfway inside the Welsh half, Jordan, finding Sunes, but Sunes gives the ball away to Byron Stevenson, and Stevenson plays it back to Di Davis, who for a moment I thought was going to throw that overarm and almost into his own net, but just bounced the ball a little harder than he intended. And Davis will clear, right-footed, high down centre field looking for the head of Toshak, but Toshak doesn't win it, Hartford does, but only gives it away to Mahoney, Mahoney forward to Toshak, Toshak tries to turn it on to Curtis, and Curtis is caught offside on the edge of the Scottish penalty area, and it's the Scots to come forward again, the ball with John Wolfe, far side, halfway line, plays it forward to Jordan, Jordan will leave it for Dalgleish, Dalgleish trying to get the shot in, here's a chance for Scotland, Graham gets the shot in, and it's well saved by Guy Davis for a corner to Scotland, and it's the Scots are not beaten yet. It's simply not Scotland's day, is it? They've had quite a few chances, really. Di Davis saved that very well, but uh, nevertheless, Graham should have scored. He was on his own, really, in front of goal. Six minutes of the game gone, the corner quickly taken. Gray will get the cross into the far post. And it's collected eventually by Di Davis, who rolls it out to the left-back position, where little Brian Flynn has it. Flynn now comes forward, halfway inside his own half, far side. Leaves the ball and gives it away to Sunes, and Sunes will play it forward to Dalgleish. Dalgleish tries to control it, too many defenders round him. And with five minutes of this home international championship remaining here at Lillian Park, it's Wales 3, Scotland 0, all three Welsh goals coming from John Toshak. Two in the first half, the second just 14 minutes from the end. And it's a throw-in to Wales, halfway line, far side, Welsh left. Skipper Terry Yorath will take it, throws it into Leighton Phillips, Phillips leaves it for Yorath on the touchline, and Yorath will easily play that one back to his goalkeeper Davis, and Davis in turn will roll it out to Yorath, and Terry Yorath will even sit on the ball, as if to emphasize how much in command Wales are, and eventually turns it back to Di Davis. And still the Scottish flags beneath us fly high because these Scottish supporters are fully behind their team, despite what must be a disappointing defeat. And it's Scotland in possession in the centre circle. Jordan will nod that down for Hartford to try and come forward. And Hartford wins the free kick in the centre circle. Dalgleish is not beaten either. He goes forward very quickly to take it. Finds Hegarty. Hegarty plays it forward. But the Welsh in very quickly. Dwyer will play it up towards the far side. Curtis waits. Far side. Welsh left. Just inside the Scottish half. Comes inside. Hanson tries to turn. Looks for support. Plays it wide. To little Brian Flynn. Flynn now goes up the Welsh left. And is brought down by George Burley. And that is a free kick, or is it in fact a throw, no foul says the referee, or is it, I think in fact the referee has given a free kick because Flynn was brought down by Burley as he went forward. We've just got four minutes of this game remaining as Wales coast home with a 3-0 lead. Free kick to Wales, far side, skipper Yorath will take it, right footed. Looking for the head of Toshak. Toshak heads it across to Curtis. Curtis chests it down, turns and shoots. And the angle is too difficult for him. And it's high and it's over. But there, George Edwards, we've seen how Alan Curtis can turn very quickly in a crowded area, suggesting perhaps that the first division could do well for him. Yes, I'm quite sure. Both he and Robbie James have played it well. And, of course, John Toshak have played extremely well. And uh, the Scottish defence haven't looked at all secure when they've been with the ball trying to turn to get their shots in. So we wait for the ball to come back, it's amongst those Scottish fans away to our right, and referee Pat Partridge calls for another football, the Welsh aren't too worried, because they lead by three goals to nil, and we're inside the last three minutes, and Wales going to a convincing win on this Millennium Park ground before 20,000 attendants who must be delighted, the Welsh fans amongst them anyway, with the way that Wales have played. The goal kick taken by Alan Ruff. Wire wins it. Only for Walk to play it a long way forward. Stevenson is there. And Stevenson just averts the danger and puts the ball behind for a corner to Scotland. 
and Scotland have had in fact six corners in this second half. Wales have only had two, but it's Wales who've got the goals that matter. And it'll be Kenny Dalglish of Liverpool to go across to that far right-hand side to take the corner. Floats it across the Welsh penalty area. Jordan heads it down. Walk will head it on and it's headed off the line, in fact, by John Mahoney. And that's a clear chance for Scotland, but Mahoney seemed to have all the time in the world, George, to head that clear. You've got to give this uh, Welsh defence a lot of credit because really they have covered, they've tackled well, and they've not given Scotland very much room at all. And although it was headed off the line, there was absolutely no danger because it was so gentle, really. A minute and a half of the game remaining, plus any time for stoppages, of which there have been very little in the second half. Wales lead by three goals to nil. The ball with Welsh keeper Di Davis of Wrexham away to our left. He will hit this right-footed high down centre field. Toshak again picks it on, but Hegarty wins it for Scotland. Halfway inside his own half, heads it forward. Jones wins it. Jones will find Yorath on the halfway line, and Yorath is robbed, and Hartford comes forward for Scotland. Centre field, halfway inside the Welsh half, sends it square to Jordan, but Stevenson is in very quickly to play it up towards the halfway line. And soon as will win it for Scotland and play it forward for Frank Gray. Gray turns it square, but little Brian Flynn is there on the edge of his own penalty area, and the ball bounced up and hit his hand. And that, in fact, a handball, but an injury to a Welsh player. I think it's Yorath. Terry Yorath, in fact. But perhaps a last chance for Scotland to get something from this match. A goal, at least, perhaps, because that is a free kick to them just three yards outside the Welsh penalty area, almost in centre field. And play held up for a minute as... Terry Yorath received treatment. I think that uh, the, the Welsh defence today, with this young boy Stevenson in it, they, they haven't put a foot wrong. Stevenson's played extremely well. Leighton Phillips, too, I thought, has read the game so well. He's tackled at the right moment for uh, so much of this game, and uh, uh, there's been nothing. Scotland really have had chances, but the Welsh defence have played superbly well. In fact, this is a wonderful Welsh victory, because Scotland can't win it now. And the sad sight for Wales of skipper Terry Yorath limping off the field and we're in injury time and it means that Peter Nicholas of Crystal Palace will receive his worst first Welsh cap and no doubt he'll be hoping to have at least a kick of the ball before the final whistle goes. But we are 35 seconds into injury time and it's a free kick to Scotland just outside the Welsh penalty area in centre field. And Hartford and Sunez standing over the ball. Gray will come in and hit it and it's blocked by the wall. It comes back to Sunez. Tries a shot, it's blocked, comes out to Hartford again, halfway inside the Welsh half, lobs it forward, Dwyer will head it away, and two or three Welsh defenders are there, and eventually Flynn tries to clear it towards his own goal, but it's blocked, and eventually a shot coming in from John Walk, from George Burley, in fact, and the ball behind for a goal kick. And surely now a fine win for Wales, because we're a minute and a half into injury time, and Wales lead by three goals to nil, as Di Davis takes his goal kick, drifts the ball towards the near side. Mahoney can only head it into touch. Gray will take the throw for Scotland. Kenny Dalgleish heads on. And there, in fact, the final whistle. And Wales have won by three goals to nil. All three goals coming from John Koshak. The first after 29 minutes. The second after 35 minutes. And a fine header to complete it just 14 minutes from time. A fine Welsh win indeed. Yes, indeed. Wales 3, Scotland 0. And we're going on now very quickly with goals. With it.